Hey everyone, and welcome to my video about the iFly A85. I've had it for a couple of weeks now, and I'm I'm completely blown away by it. It's um, I wanted a little drone that I could fly inside um, over winter, over the rainy seasons, and uh, ideally I was hoping to do some acro on it. And yeah, this, this is this is delivering. This isn't an unboxing or a review. This is basically the changes I've made to to make it better for me. Um, Everyone's opinions can be different, but this is what works for me. Out of the out of the box, I found that in it, it comes with horizon mode. Um, in horizon mode, it flies absolutely fine. Um, it was it was pretty much you know all the roads and everything else were as you'd want them to be. Um, the problems came when I switched it into acro. Uh, I couldn't find any videos that were sort of of people doing acro, especially indoors. So um, I went through many many hours of many different rates and. A couple of other changes. The the battery by default comes toilet tank style and in angle mode that's absolutely fine um, but in acro as soon as you do any kind of roll it, it just you ended up fighting the momentum and the weight wanted to bring it back down so it took a lot to get it spinning and it took a, even more to stop it spinning so there was a real sort of violent jolt so nice easy change just took the velcro off here, twisted around, and um, now the I mount the batteries the same as if it was a um, a standard five inch. That that solved a lot for for for, for me in acro mode. The other bonus of it is that when it's round this way, is you can get to the USB much easier. When it was round this way, you'd have to f fold up the strap. Only little thing, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's all I've done to it physically. I've made a lot of changes in uh, the PIDs. These are very personal. This is not what's gonna be right for everyone, but this is this is what's right for me. Um, I'm I'm used to flying at somewhere between 800 and 1,000. I've been getting slower and slower with my rates. Um, I've settled on 700 for for the A85, um, but I've got a whole lot of expo on it because when you're in when you're in acro, it's just so sensitive. So um, I would have gone for much more linear, but because I really wanted to do rolls and flips, I've I've got that high expo, so I've gone up to 700 for so I can actually rotate it fast enough, and um, I probably would have it down at 300, just if I was if, if I wasn't planning on flipping, 300 would probably be um, about right for me. Um, and I've got a bit of a weird curve on the throttle as well, um, just because it gave me more resolution um, for that as well. So I found changing altitude definitely seems to be one of the harder things with this. Um, going up's nice and easy, but to come down nice and smooth, um, that's, 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 that's one of the things I'm struggling with as well. Um, but pretty simple changes, and that's, that's kind of what I've settled on. After I got it into macro mode, um, I found that there was some twitching, and it, it didn't feel like it was me, but it very possibly could be, just that I was so new to it. Um, I read through, I went through the box and I found this. I'd missed it when I first got it. But one of the things it talks about is um, iFlight's recommendations are uh, Dynamic Crossfire 5150 um, is, this is down here, uh, is not recommended lock, lock to either 150 or 50 for better performance. So once I saw that, I watched a couple of videos and I thought I'd change it and yeah, two places. One was, as you can see, the um, you can do a beat flight profile. I assume that was a part of the standard tune, so I didn't change anything on there, but I think under the presets you can apply it if you wipe it. The other place I did it was in the radio. So first thing I did is power up the quad. Uh, not with the batteries. Safety first, not that this little thing is going to do much damage, but you know. Um, I have a, a Mambo uh, using TBS Agent Light, nice and easy. So for me, push and hold menu, go down to TBS Agent Light, give it a few seconds, and two changes. <clears throat> One's under the Nano RX, under General. This is the iFlight one of changing RF profile from dynamic to uh, 50 or 150. I think 99% of people who fly this inside will want the lower latency 
um, and less range will be not a problem. So they go for 50. If this was a five inch or a seven or whatever, I'm sure you'd want to go for, for 150. But for me, I've gone for 50. And then the second change is under micro TX, under radio settings, uh, changing dynamic power from on to off. I don't think this is related, but I heard a few people saying this is a, a good thing to do. I'm, I'm not worried about battery, I'm, um, so yeah, full power all the time. Um, and yeah, made those two changes, and that seemed to take some of the twitching off. It may be in psychological, but it did seem to, to make a difference, so that was the other one I did. I've, um, I've been really impressed with how sturdy this is. I've crashed it loads, absolutely loads and loads and loads. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, the, the ducting and the frame is, is looking really good. The um, crossfire receiver at the back, that's absolutely fine. I've definitely bent the Vista antenna um, and it does pop off quite a lot. Um, but you just push it back on again. Um, when you're flying, you can actually hear when it falls off, it makes a slightly different noise. I think I'm gonna do some kind of, um, I, I was hoping I could do like an elastic band over here, but that would then interfere with the ducks. So I'm probably gonna end up doing some kind of epoxy or something on here to, to make that, see if I can 3D print something to, to keep that on, because that comes off probably four or five times every time I fly. Um, but yeah, this thing's a tank. Um, yeah, I've got some footage of a of a crash, a couple of crashes that I've got. I've got some spare ducks, I've got a spare hood, and I've got loads of props. Uh, I've already bent a few props, and you can see these ones have got a fair few dings on them already. But a little bit of a pain to change, but hopefully it doesn't happen too often. When when I got this, I got the, it came with the original um, iFlight full sense. Um, 450 milliamp hours, 75C, uh, and the discharge is uh, 75C. Um, yeah, 4S, really, really happy with these. Um, Power-wise, seems to be, you know, I fly recommend these, so I'm, you know, there's, there's, there's good reason for that. Um, comes with the XT30. Um, when when this is mounted, the, the, <coughs> the balance cable is pretty big. Um, there's no way I've, I've found to kind of easily, I'm sure I could get some elastic bands on it, but it just seems to be, it just seems to be unnecessary. I did want to buy some more batteries, um, so I ended up going with GMB, same million power, same same everything. These are 80 C instead of 75 C. I can't tell the difference with these. These are these are cheaper. So if I was buying these again, I would go with uh, the GMBs. Um, and as a bonus, they have a very small balancing cable, uh, so about sorry balancing port. So they actually mount a lot nicer, and I think these will interfere less during crashes. Um, but yeah, with the um, iFlight 85, if anyone's thinking about it, um, I'm a big fan. I'm sure there's better drones for uh, other people. Um, I would love to have gone for um, some kind of analog um, and gone for something smaller, um, but I wanted something digital just because I'm, I'm DJI. Um, maybe somewhere in the future I'd consider um, Walksnail um, with, <clears throat> with a 1S, um, but until I've got loads more money I'm uh, I'm very happy I'm very lucky to be flying uh, DJI so yeah if um, any questions let me know um, I probably won't know the answer but I'll google them for you thanks for watching <laughs>